being the cleanest, greenest, big city in America. Now, I've seen the tapes of that speech that day, and they zeroed in on an elected official, a mayor, from a city somewhere in California. And as I said that we were going to be the cleanest, greenest, big city in America, he smirked. And I remember watching that tape afterwards and saying, watch. And I'm very proud uh, that in the four years that I've been mayor, uh, let's look at the record. And Martha shared it a little bit with you. We had the ignominious distinction of having the dirtiest air in America. We owned the dirtiest public utility in America. Uh, our green power portfolio was about 3.5%. I had the audacity to say we were going to be at 20% by 2010. At the time, the state was requiring a 2017 uh, date to be at 20%. Well, let me share with you that uh, part of why we're going to be in Copenhagen is we're going to be at 15% uh, renewable power. We've quintupled uh, our renewable power portfolio. Next year, we're going to be the only city in California that met the 20% renewable portfolio. And so to that young man that was smirking that day, we're going to have the last laugh. And you know, when you look at what we've done and how we're turning the challenge uh, of climate change in the city with the dirtiest air on its head, we're using an opportunity to build the green economy, been at the forefront of the solar, clean tech, and clean energy movements each time with an eye towards creating jobs and building a sustainable future. I'll be joining with mayors from around the world to demand, to demand that cities play a larger role uh, in climate change. You see, cities are the first responders, responsible for implementing the policies set by national governments. I love when I see both state and national leaders uh, at national conferences talking about what they're going to ask cities to do. And so, as I said, the state passed a law that said we had to be at 20% renewables. Uh, the state doesn't implement the law. Cities do. In fact, as many of you know, the United States, although we were one of the conveners of Kyoto back when, we actually never signed the Kyoto Accords. And when I was elected mayor on uh, July 1st of 2005, there were about 150 mayors that had stood up, led by Mayor Nichols of Seattle, and they said, maybe the national government hasn't signed on, but we will. 150 mayors four years ago. A month ago, I was in Seattle, where the 1,000th mayor has signed on to the Kyoto Accords. And I'm very proud of that because most of the greenhouse gases that are emitted in the United States of America are emitted where? In cities. They're not emitted in the rural areas, mountainous regions of the nation, and anywhere closely proximate to how they're generated in big cities. And that's not just true for the United States. That's true for the world. And the reason why many of the nations city states, and that's what LA is, uh, will be represented there, is because the mayors are saying, you know, we've all heard the prognostications. We do not expect much to come from uh, national government commitment to the issue of climate change. What you'll see is uh, the developed world uh, equivocate. You'll see uh, the developing world say, well, if you don't do it, neither will I. You'll see everybody pointing the other finger except for mayors. We're not the only big city in the country, the big city in the country that's moving forward on the issue of climate change. There are others, without question. 
fact, there are many others around the world that are engaged in this effort. We're out in front of state and national governments. We're leading the way at reducing our carbon footprint and creating the jobs to sustain us. We're going to have a seat at the table because we've earned it. We're going to have a seat at the table because we're going to do more than just talk. We're going to share with the national governments in the world that we're walking the walk. And so we've earned a voice in these discussions. In Copenhagen, we aim to forge new agreements on how nations around the world will respond to the changes. But more importantly, we're going to make sure they do by making sure the cities do that. Decisions we make will have huge implications for the environment, the economy, and whether we can build sustainable cities. Global climate change is forever transformed. The way we think about the environment and how we live our lives is without question a changed paradigm. The devastation of New Orleans, deadly mudslides in the Philippines, worldwide food shortages. Here in LA, we know the impacts of climate change uh, do not affect all Angelinos equally. Many of our low-income communities bear a disproportionate brunt of the impacts of climate change, particularly in terms of ecological, economic, and health effects. And while skeptics may want to explain climate change as a naturally occurring process, we know that climate impacts have largely been created by specific human activities. So what do we do about it? And what have we been doing about it? Well, as Martha mentioned, I released my climate action plan, the Green LA plan. And you know, Martha, you said it. I remember convening a group of progressives, environmental leaders. And when I laid out what we were going to do, they looked at me and like, you know, well, there he goes again. That's how do we do it? How does it happen? Well, I'll tell you how it happens. You got to set the bar high. Uh, you got to engage uh, the community. Uh, you got to leverage uh, the resources that you have at your disposal. So we set the goal of reducing our carbon usage by 35 percent below 1990 levels by the year 2030. Uh, no city, no big city in the United States of America has set the goal that high. Now, we didn't just set a goal. We had milestones in between. Uh, when I announced this uh, standard, people thought we were crazy, thought it was too ambitious, thought we'd never succeed, uh, that we have, they didn't think that we'd have the political will here to meet those goals, uh, but that's not all we're doing. We're transforming the largest municipal utility in the country, which also used to be the dirtiest, into a green utility. We've set the goal of getting 20% of our energy from renewable sources, and I've, as I told you, we're at 15% today on an annualized basis. We will be at 20% uh, next year. We set a, another goal. We're going to be at 40% renewable energy by 2020. And I'm proud to say that, that we're on track to meet those, these goals. We're going to be the only carbon, coal-free city uh, in the United States of America by 2020, which <laughs> now I talked about my daughter and conserva cat and how you all grew up. You know, it's not just about going green. It's also about going more efficient. In the four years I've been mayor, we've increased 19 fold uh, our energy efficiency. We're implementing the world's largest LED streetlight retrofit program. Over the next five years, you'll see 140,000 streetlights across the city retrofitted with LED lights, saving not only 40% of our energy use for that purpose, but also reducing some 40,500 tons of carbon, saving $10 million in energy costs. We'll eliminate, as I said, our dependence on coal by 2020, and that alone will eliminate more than 10 million metric ton, tons of carbon emissions. And finally, proud to say that we met the goals of carbon reduction set out in Kyoto. Uh, 